Prison farm labor is the new topic this week. I have it in my hand here, ABC News. Uh, January 29th, 2024, it came out at 7.45 or 7.54 a.m. That was yesterday. Um, it appears that in a sweeping two-year investigation, the Associated Press found foods linked to prisoners wind up in the supply chain from everything from Frosted Flakes cereal to ballpark hot dogs and gold medal flour and Coca-Cola. Um, I want to talk today about prison farms. And yes, those prison farms are run by um, inmates and the labor is done by inmates. We know that. Now, I believe the article goes real far into this is slavery, this is uh, like the old days. They use Angola prison in Louisiana as the example, the country's largest maximum security prison. Uh, farming and raising cattle, and the prison cattle are rolled out of the Louisiana State Penitentiary where men are sentenced to hard labor forced to work for pennies an hour or sometimes nothing at all. After rumbling down a country road to an auction house, the cows are bought by local ranchers and then followed by the Associated Press another 600 miles to a Texas slaughterhouse that feeds into the supply chains of giants like McDonald's, Walmart, and Cargill. Well, my cattle that I raise here um, are, are also in the food chain supply. Uh, I work hard, but it's, it's actually relaxing to me, but it's not about me. This is about the inmates. Let me tell you my experience. And I can only tell you my experience from Florida prison farms. During my travels around the Florida state prisons, Hendry Correctional Institution, DeSoto Correctional Institution, they had cattle farms. And the inmates volunteered for it. Now, here in this article, it says many, uh, if they don't want to work on the farms, are subject to uh, uh, scrutiny. They're subject to be locked in isolation. Um, you know, I can't speak for what Angola is doing, but I did not see that happen here in Florida. What I did see was inmates who told me that their... Day. And if there's any inmates watching this video, please tell me what, what you thought about it. Uh, I'm going to get to the pay in a minute. I might be with you on the pay, believe it or not. Pay needs to be higher. But um, the work is, is not, you know, f terrible. It actually, the inmates tell me they enjoy their day. The time goes by faster. Uh, there was a movie out about a true story about um, inmates... Uh, caring and training and raising horses they said that made their day great and their and the time go by much faster and they felt they were doing something worthwhile the same thing with the inmates that i talked to that worked on the um uh, cattle farms they enjoyed it I, when i see these articles i'm thinking well did you go directly and ask the inmates that volunteered if they enjoy it or not, or if it made their time go by faster. Uh, I know you follow these trucks with the cattle that went to the slaughterhouses and the auctions, but um, they really use verbiage in here like, like they're slaves and being treated like slaves. I didn't see that here in Florida. I saw inmates that were happy and came in took their shower, ate their evening meal, and felt like they did something worthwhile. Um, same with the uh, fish farms. We'd had, we had fish farms here in Florida, and the inmates enjoyed it, and they learned something. And it's not just labor. You're learning something. You're learning how to raise the fish and what they need. You're learning how to raise cattle, what nutrients they need what feeds they need. You're actually learning something and not sitting in a cell doing nothing but twiddling your thumbs, uh, smuggling drugs, 
getting in fights. Um, to me, it's an education when the inmates do this. California, I went to the farms at the county jail in, Calif in California and, and the prisons in California where they were growing crops. And of course, the places I went to, they were growing crops for the inmates to eat themselves. But either way, they were very happy. I did a video with four inmates in California. It was for a news outlet. I don't, I guess I should have got a link to it, but the, I talked to the inmates and told them that I was very proud of them. And they said, we love it and we're raising chickens. And they talked about how they love, they just get up in the morning and they look forward to going out there, cleaning the chicken pens, collecting the eggs, feeding and watering the chickens, learning about the soils for the gardens, what, what uh, fertilizers they need for the soils and what plants uh, grow during certain times of the year and others that don't and the tools that go along with it and how they work, the cultivating tools and so forth. It's not like I'm just sitting here um, talking about this stuff and not having been there and, and interviewing inmates and seeing what they actually do. I've been there on the farms. I've talked to the inmates that work on these farms. I didn't get any negative comments out of it at all. Uh, this article really makes it look bad. Um, I think that these programs are good. I know that some inmates, I don't know what the hourly pay is now. We're getting cents on an hour, you know, like a quarter an hour, who knows, you know, things like that. Okay, I know that there's a group out there that's gonna tell me, who cares, they're incarcerated, they committed a crime, they can do this for nothing as far as I'm concerned. Well, we wanna rebuild these folks back into population, into the general population, right? The ones that aren't in there for life and the ones that uh, are usually working on these farms are not, uh, they're classified to be able to come outside the fence and work and uh, be considered uh, a less risk of escape than some of the others. So why don't we give them a chance and why don't we, we're not going to give them minimum wage. Come on, all, all states are, are short of money short-staffed, but let it give them a little bit more than what they're getting. So at the same time, they're having some money for canteen items uh, because they're doing more than some of the other inmates. These inmates that are going out and working on these uh, cattle farms, fish farms, gardens, uh, tree farms of California, they had a, a big uh, uh, orchard, pinyons and things, and, and and fruits and they work out on the almond orchards and they worked on, on that. But they all didn't tell me anything negative. They told me they liked it. I sat down in circle groups with inmates doing these things and they're saying, hey, it gives me a purpose to wake up to in the morning. All right. Is there going to be some inmates out there say I hated it? Yes, I'm sure there is. Not everyone's going to like it, but we're here in Florida, if you didn't have to do it if you didn't want to, but we sure didn't hold you, hold it against you if you didn't volunteer to work on the farm or put in the work on the farm. Um, so when I see these big two year investigation by the Associated Press, it seems like they're trying to turn it into a bad thing. A shadow workforce with few protections in addition to tapping a cheap, reliable workforce, companies get tax credits and other financial incentives. Yes, here at our work release center, that's true, inmates are let out on their last year. Certain ones are classified to be safe to come out to a work release center. They go work at a pallet making company. They go to work at a trucking company. They go to work at a restaurant and they make regular minimum wage and some make much more than minimum wage if they know how to weld and go work at, at a place over here that makes uh, mobile homes. They come in with some pretty good paychecks, folks. 
And that's good because that helps them get a new start out into society because that money, a certain amount of the money is held uh, by the state because they're housing them and feeding them, but they get the majority of the money in a lump sum when they leave, the money they've earned for that last year working out in the workforce. But yes, it is true. Those companies that hire the inmates do get uh, federal incentives, financial incentives, and tax breaks. So what? The company is hiring inmates, which a lot of companies still today won't do. And it's a win-win for everybody. I'm not, I, you know, I don't think that's a negative. I don't think it's a shadow like the uh, ABC News report here has. I think it's trying to help. The prisoners often work in industries with severe labor shortages, doing some of the country's dirtiest and most dangerous jobs. Well, I know that these inmates can refuse to go to work for that company. That's fine. And if, if they can get a job with another company, that's fine as well. They're given a certain amount of time to go out on the work release programs here in Florida and find the job they want. And if they don't find one, they may get assigned one because you can't be at a work release center forever just laying in bed doing nothing. You have to go to work, folks. That's what we do to survive. That's what I did for 38 years in the workforce. And now I'm still doing uh, labor work by choice out here. Um, I, I just want to get the point across that I disagree that they're suffering working on these cattle farms and fish farms and orchards and labors. I, I, I would like to go out and ABC hire me and I'll go out and do an investigation for you. I'll travel state to state. I'll interview the inmates that work in these farms and I want to get the scoop from them. I want to hear what they have to say. I will agree with the ABC report that they are going to complain about the pay. That's the only thing. They're going to complain about the pay, uh, but they're not going to complain about having something to do while being incarcerated and learning something every day. I'll find a picture of me um, with the inmates that I told you I did a, a, a video with, or they took a video of us talking and me interviewing them. I'll put that on here, okay? So you can see the picture of me with the inmates working in the gardens and raising the chickens in California. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. This is the uh, media link, ABC News. If you want to look it up and read it yourself, it's very lengthy, uh, titled, Prisoners in U.S. are part of a hidden workforce, okay? Put out yesterday. Read it for yourself. I know I'm going to get some people say that it's very unfair to have them working in that, but I, I really wish that some people would understand that the inmates are getting an education. One more thing, <clears throat> at a local uh, juvenile uh, facility that I worked at called the STAR program, uh, where we tried to get inmates, uh, juvenile inmates, uh, their GED, physical exercise in the morning, and we had a fish farm, and we had a horticulture farm. Those kids loved it. I would go out and say, show me what's going on with the fish. And I didn't even know how to do this stuff. You know, I'm just there as their uh, in, um, drill instructors, what we were called. And um, I'd say, show me. And they said, well, these are saltwater fish. These are redfish. And we have to have that water just right. And they explained the formula on how to get the saltwater just right. And then they said, now, these are freshwater fish. Man, they're eating up. They're learning. They're learning. Same with the horticulture. Show me what's going on in the horticulture. I like to ask them to show me what's going on because they loved to show me. They weren't getting paid to work on that fish farm or in that horticulture farm. They did get to eat uh, the fish though on, uh, on, on a regular basis. So there's some, they, they have fish fries. We would have fish fry for the uh, juvenile inmates and we would have a fish fry for the staff members. Everybody's happy. Can we look at the positive side of these farms? 
for the kids and the adult inmates. I think what this article is trying to do is just totally get rid of all the farms at the prisons. I think it's a mistake. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Um, the pay, the pay would be the one thing we should, we could debate about. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Just wanted to get that out there. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.